Well, this is one tough box. That's what she said. Mailbag time, we've got some interesting things in here. Let's get stuck into it. As always, there'll be links down below for these items, and I will go smallest to biggest. Bulbs. They hopefully still work. There you go, 12 volt, 10 watt bulbs. You can get these in high wattage as well, like 20 watt ones. This is actually just used for, in this case, a little lamp, like a bedside table lamp, and a bulb blue. So I've got some spares, because we didn't have a spare. And here is the lamp the bulb is for, so you might as well fix it. So you're sitting here, and I can get up a pile of things to fix. But it works. See it like last, shall we? Suction cups. There are lots of things over the years where the suction cups have gone bad, you know, UV and that sort of stuff. They crack and they go brittle and hard, maybe. you. And I've got something at the moment which needs new suction cups on it because it's starting to fail. Saw some on AliExpress, I thought, let's get some. Now, I did actually buy a few different types. This is just one of them because I estimated the size and I may have estimated it wrong. But anyway, I've ordered a few different ones and they're different sizes and stuff anyway. Whole things on the windscreens with these, you can make around brackets and what have you, or repair brackets, existing ones. And there's been lots of times I actually wish I'd replaced them once, and I just didn't occur to me I could go to AliExpress and buy some. Here's some more. These are a different style. These ones have got a threaded post on them. So it's actually cut with a built in threaded post. So you can attach this to something. And actually, these are a bit more robust. You can, you know, pull on these ones. So these are good as something which actually has a system which requires a bit more tension put on it. And these are definitely much stiffer as well. These are quite robust ones. I've got five of those. They'll be useful. Maybe I'll use these instead of these ones. DC to DC converter. 12 volts to 24 volts. 5 volt 20 amp. Net enclosure. It's nice. So 100 watt DC to DC converter. This brand does lots of different ones. They've got different versions. It calls it a buck converter. So output is 5 volts. 5 volts 20 amps max. This output's 5 volts. And you've got obviously 12 to 24 volts input. I think the webpage says something like you could do from, I think it was like 12 volts up to 28 volts or 30 volts or something like that maximum. I think it said something like that. So as it screws together, let's open up have a look inside and see what it looks like. As I've got the screws out. <laughs> it's potted as well. Well, wow. it's a soft potting. So if you really want to, you could dig that out. There's a fuse in there as well. Not like you could replace it very easily if it is blown. Big diode there, a couple of caps. Uh, look like Nippon Kimikon caps. That's surprising. That's what it claims to be anyway. Are they really? Hmm. Big data. You've got a polymer cap here, another cap here, whatever that is. 105 degree rated at least. So these ones, apparently. That's all right. And it has this little plastic cover that goes over the top to make sure this in data doesn't touch against the cover. That's a nice little touch. This actually feels like a quality unit. I'm surprised. How good is it? Don't know. Let's try it and find out. How accurate is the 5 volts? Don't know. There's no adjustment. So, better be right. Oh, I've hooked up some leads to this. This goes to my power supply. This will go to my electronic load. I'm going to show you that now. Let's have a look. Does it work? So I'm going to set my power supply to 25 volts. I might be running for 12 volts, actually. I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to go with this. But we'll try 25 volts for now. And there we go. We're getting 5.1 volts coming out. That's absolutely fine. Let's put some load on it. This is doing 100 milliamps, that's nothing for this. Crank it up a bit. One amp. Two. Now we will see some voltage drop through the cables, right? I'm just using your standard multimeter type cables on it. Just using clip leads, so they will be dropped through them. Two amps. Three. Four. Five. Now my plan for this is only to use about three amps. Right? I'm only using about three amps as the plan. So anything more than that is a bonus. That's doing five amps there, because I've got a five amp limit on this thing. So I've changed the limit to 30 amp limit, and so we can do more than 5 amps now. 10 amps is where it's diving quite a bit, but that's probably because of the cables. So I'm happy with 10 amps, that's absolutely fine. You know, I only need probably 2 amps, maybe 3 really. In reality, it's all really different, it's about 3 amps maybe. That's fine. Now, I always over engineer things when I'm building things. The fact this can do way more than that current, I'm happy with that. Let's check the housing, sitting at 1 amp, it's just still stone cold, there's nothing there. Let's go up to it's got 3 amps, let's leave it on 3 amps for a little bit. So that's doing 15 watts. So 25 volts is doing 660 milliamps. Let's try changing the voltage. 20 volts is doing 100 milliamps. I'm just going down to 11 volts. That's 9 volts there, it's still going. 8, 6, yeah, 6 is diving. 7, 10, there we go. Sort of it needs like 10 volts minimum, looks of it. And that's fine. 
and that's doing one and a half amps. It's using 15 watts on the input there, nearly 16 watts to generate 15 on the output. So we've got one watt loss going through the unit. So that's not too bad. So that's working alright. Heat wise, still stone cold. That feels absolutely fine. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. A quite robust little unit. And it's capable of way more than I actually needed to do. So this should last me a very long time. I might actually buy another one of these. That works really well. So I might buy another one. I always like to have a spare. I might be dropping this on the desk, it'll probably dent it. <laughs> oh look, it's another one. Looks familiar. <laughs> so this one is an even beefier version. Right, it's got some big terminals in there. Copper terminals with heat shrink, that's nice. This one here is 24 volts in. 12 volts out, 100 amps apparently. 100 amps! You have to try this one out, don't we? Here is my test setup. Now I've put this onto my power supply again, which I've put in parallel mode, so I can generate 10 amps at 24 volts. This also goes to my electronic load as before, exactly as the last time. So we'll try this one out. These cables will not take 10 amps. The connections aren't going to go good, so I expect to see voltage drops and some bad behavior from the current draw. So let's try this one out. So you go, 24 volts coming in. 12 volts coming out, I've got it set to 3 amps, so I powered up with a load on it and that was fine. 35 watts coming out, 800 milliamps on the power supply, so let's crank the current up a bit more. So 10 amps, 116 watts, don't think it's supposed to be able to do 100 amps. I don't believe 100 amps to be honest, but hey, you never know. Let's keep going. Power supply is getting close, that's 4 amps on the power supply. Well, it'll be 8 amps because it's in parallel. 170 watts. Power supply is going to overcurrent, so there you go. That's 9.5 amps on the power supply, doing 200 watts, 18 amps on here, 11.1 volts. That's absolutely fine, that's working okay. Nice, that's a good one. And again, the build quality of this is really good, so this seems like a decent brand. So the brand, she's Shenzhen Wingao Electronic Co. The links down below for these things. Obviously, a long term test to be better, you know, putting it on, on load for you know an hour or so and see it handles the load. But short term test looks promising. They didn't blow up, so that's a win. Oh, I missed. It's supposed to go in the edge of the box. I did that once in a package and it's full of recycled paper stuffing, so it's like padded paper. It went everywhere. So these are some quite robust 2.1mm DC jack kind of cables, right? There's two of them in here. And there's a fairly decent insulation there, it's pretty thick. And the wires and saws look pretty good as well. Are they aluminium, steel, copper? Don't know. But I just needed some longish cables. I've got a few different lengths in here. A few different ones. I will do it in a tournament. Because I've got a project in mind which involves these and some other things. I needed to have some abilities to put some longer cables on and run a distance. Well, a shortest distance. It's not a particularly long distance. You know, a metre or two. And, you know, arrange it all for the required project. This is a box from Jamaica. Jam Jamico? Jamico? You want to pronounce it? There must be a tab down there somewhere, surely. Well, this is one tough box. That's what she said. I think I ordered a few bits. So, someone commented on one of my videos recently that Jamico was. Jamico? Jamico? I don't know. They had some reasonable prices on some voltage regulators and stuff. I might have bought some. You know how I like my voltage regulators <laughs> and other bits and pieces. And I, whilst I was on there, and you know, that's kind of what I went there for, um, I found some other bits and pieces which I thought were interesting some op amps and some a bit more unusual rare op amps, metal case ones, some of these transistors like this, um, which I know I've used in things in the past, bits of test which I've fixed. So I was getting a bit of an assortment there. This is a 7815 regulator there. So, yes. I've got lots of bits in here. <laughs> CA3086N. I think these are transistor arrays, but I know these, I think that's what they were. A number actually. Yes, here we go. MPN transistors. General purpose. These are used in lots of products. So I've repaired test gear which have had these in before, which I've had to replace. So and I just like browsed and thought, oh that looks like a part I should buy. And I spent a little bit of money. So we've got these other transistors in here as well, and it's just all sorts of things I found. And I could have purchased a lot more, I had to restrain myself slightly. But only slightly. 
I could have bought more. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, the last box, biggest one, and also the heaviest, I think. Why is it in pals for some reason? Mini UPS. It's a mini POE 60 watt UPS, so it's basically got a bunch of outputs on it. In there. So we've got a power cable which is no good to me because they're unkind. Cloverleaf, I'm sure we'll do that one. Come on, it's a cloverleaf, I'm sure we'll do something. It's, just... it's got a cable here like this too. Caution! Earth wire here. Yeah, okay. <coughs> and there is the back. So you've got a PoE output here, so you put your LAN connection there and PoE. It's unlikely there's any Chinese firmware running in this thing which can then talk across the internet to its home service. It's, who knows? Power input here, 100 to 240 volt AC. So again, also have chosen that one there for the compactness, because of the size. And then we've got all these other ports here. So 12 volts at 1.5 amps across all of these. Then we've got 12 volts at 3 amps down here, and 9 volts at 1 amp here. This is to run in the motorhome as a UPS, basically. That's the idea of it. And it has a power button in the front, just there. And obviously you've got switchable voltages here for the PoE, 15 volts or 24 volts. I may or may not use that. I do have a piece of gear which is PoE, which runs at 24 volts, which currently runs for a mains power supply. It's a wireless access point. So that might be a good thing to get hooked up onto this. It's one less power supply being used, a bit less current draw. Having one power supply is more efficient than having two or three of them. It's a bit better than having that, all those losses adding up. And the idea is I could run things like the wireless modem, which we have broadband internet in the motorhome, and that runs for 12 volts. And you have a network switch, which is used for the ethernet equipment. That also runs off 12 volts. So I'm plugging them straight in here, which is part of the reason I wanted these cables. So that would power the modem, the network hub, one of the Wi-Fi units, and because I've got nine volts and higher current 12 volts here, I was probably gonna use one of these ones. I could use this to drive this thing we looked at just now, the 5 volt output, to power the Raspberry Pi web server. You run a Raspberry Pi as a web server in there, which draws a couple of amps. I wanted a decent power supply. The idea is I could run this off this UPS and run all the gear off this thing. So if there was a small power outage because the inverter drops down for some reason, which does happen occasionally, it happened a couple of times in inconvenient moments. Did you miss my master coffee? Coffee is live. Because you have a electric kettle and sometimes the kettle's a bit much for it when the battery's a bit low and it kills the inverter. Anyway. That's why I want to get this, because then we can run this, all the gear, which is critical to function, which has to run all the time, can run off this little UPS. If the mains drops out, this will keep it going until we get the power back on again. Well, it doesn't drop out for long, it's usually, you know, 20 seconds or something like that, maybe, if that. This just needs to keep it going long enough to keep it going so it doesn't drop off. And that's the idea, so I can put this maybe on a bench with all the other equipment I use. We can just turn it on off with this button on the front. So we need to power the gear up, just push that button, power the gear up. When we're finished for the day, we push the button, turn it back down again. It's got a little fan there apparently. But that's the plan. It wasn't particularly cheap, this thing. It's a necessary evil. It actually has a bit of manual with it too. And a guarantee certificate. Yeah, luck I'm going to be using that. Because obviously I'm going to send it back to China if it blows up. That's not going to happen. Anyway, but it looks like a quality piece of gear. It looks very nice. Um, there you go, some specs on the back there if you want it. All right, send the positive outputs. Whether that's 3 amps total on that rail, I'm not sure. I suppose I could test that at some point. This is a bit about it. Links down below. There you go. Now I've got a whole bunch of stuff to sort out and put away. And loads of components which I need to put into my parts inventory site. All these ones. Don't remember. Mypartsbin.com. Go and check it out. Video's down below to watch in the description. And there's some probably tagged in here in the well in the bottom of the video. Subscribe over here if you're not already subscribed, and a Patreon support thing over there if you want to support my Patreon. Click on that link, go to Patreon. I do extra things for the Patreons, mostly things like if I'm doing a piece of test gear repair, is I'll include information about that piece of test gear, like service manuals, manuals, any ROM images I may scrape off them. If I, you know, download the EPROM off it or something like that, I'll add attach that to it as well. That kind of thing. Catch you later.